I'm Michael Wargo, team pilot with Precision Aerobatics, and today we're going to talk a little bit about batteries. Um, I want you to understand them a little bit better because I think choosing a battery for your aircraft is a bit more critical than you might think. Just because it says your plane requires a 2200 milliamp uh, doesn't mean it will perform the same with all uh, with uh, different C ratings. So first of all, I want to explain to you this. There is, uh, on this battery, you'll see it says 2600, okay? That is the milliamp rating. That means it's 2.6 amps. And that basically is the capacity of the battery, how much battery there actually is. Okay, this is a four cell, 14.8 volt. And um, also, it is C rated at 50 C. Now, PA's batteries tend to uh, to be very light compared to uh, most of the competition at 50C. The reason this is 50C and not 120C or something higher <clears throat> is because it just doesn't need to be. It depends on the application. If you're flying an EDF jet or a helicopter, I mean you really need the amperage because the, the motors that are in them are, are, are very hungry. They take a lot of amperage. Now what the C rating means is that is basically a multiplier uh, as to the discharge rate. In other words, it's, this is 2.6 amps, but it is not necessarily going to only discharge 2.6 amps because even a small aircraft you know, will draw 25 or 30 amps when you have it at full power, okay? Um, or maybe 45 amps. So you simply, if this was, for instance, 10C, it would output uh, 26 amps. If it's 20C, it will output 52 amps. And that's basically the way it works. It's very simple. The math works on all of them. All right, one of the big things about batteries that's so important is the weight. Um, this is the battery I use in the electric shock. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's a 50C rated battery, 1,000 milliamps. And it's, to me, it's just perfect for the application. Definitely, you'll, ne you'll never be hungry. It always has enough amperage to fly it perfectly. Um, however, this battery is only 750 milliamps, okay, 0.75 of an amp. This battery weighs as much or more than this battery. So you have a lot less uh, voltage to, to uh, not voltage, but uh, uh, milliamps as far as storage capacity. Uh, it's basically like how much gasoline is left in the tank, okay? Um, but it's heavy. It's as heavy as this. So if basically they both deliver exactly what you need as far as amperage goes, you don't need an 80 to 120 uh, C battery. It's just pointless weight, extra weight. Uh, why not fly more milliamps? That means you could be up there longer and still have all the power you need. So choosing the right battery is very important. All right, the big deal with choosing a battery, and this is the, the real uh, issue when it comes to trying to choose the right battery for your airplane. <clears throat> and I have some fantastic examples here. Um, I'll show you the weight of each of these batteries. Uh, the two on the left are 750 milliamps. The one on the right is 1,000. The logic here is the 1000 milliamp is a lot heavier than the 750. But depending on the C rating and the formula that they're using, uh, the weight really is kind of, uh, uh, kind of different. In other words, this 1000 uh, milliamp battery, this is the, the uh, uh, G2, the generation 2 version of the uh, uh, PA's batteries, which are amazing batteries, by the way. Um, <clears throat> this one here is very, very light for the 1,000 milliamps. So that's why I am flying that battery on my, uh, my electric shock, okay? The two 750 milliamp batteries I flew on the electric shock this morning to test, um, I got, theoretically, you should get 25% less flight time because there's 25% more milliamps in the pack but it doesn't actually work out that way so <clears throat> the one in the middle because it's only a 20c pack 
uh, I got relatively little flight time. And of course, you know, it had a hard time delivering, uh, you know, 20 or more amps, uh, which of course the uh, electric shock wanted to drive. The one to the left of that 750 is also 750, but as you can see, the uh, C rating is much higher. Uh, the C rating on this one is 65 C. So it's considerably heavier, heavier and bigger. The one on the left almost weighs as much as the one on the right. So in this case, I'd much rather fly the one on the right because this particular airplane doesn't need a 100 C uh, battery. It doesn't need spectacularly high discharge. This is another really great example, and th this is the lesson to be learned on picking the right battery. The one on the right literally has a higher milliamp rating, but is only a 40C battery. The one on the left is a high discharge battery. The thing compared to this one is ginormous, but it's less milliamps. Um, I fly these, the, the really high discharge, you know, uh, 65 to 120 C uh, discharge. I might want to use this in my jet, in my EDF. It's very heavy, so I hate using heavy batteries. But sometimes the EDFs draw so much current and you need it for longer periods of time. Uh, this battery will survive a lot longer and will be more functional. The one on the right, I use in my pattern plane. It doesn't have a high discharge rate, so it's, I don't want to say it's worthless in an EDF, but it really doesn't want to deliver the punch. So, but the one on the right is absolutely ideal for my pattern plane because I don't need to discharge really high amps. I don't need to fly super fast. So um, it lasts a long time and it's literally the perfect battery for that application. The battery on the left is a perfect battery for the EDF application. Um, one of the reasons that I love all the PA batteries is because they're always lightweight while delivering enough amps. They're, they're kind of ideal for the PA planes. And they're actually ideal for my flying, so I tend to gravitate towards wanting to, to fly these batteries. And truthfully, these Gen 2 batteries now are, are just amazing. They're really, really, really good. Um, they're better than ever. Um, I know Daniel has been raving about them. Uh, I've been flying them a little bit and absolutely love them, uh, just for the record. A bit about some of the other brands that you see. I mean, there's tons of them. Um, I borrowed some of these from my friends here at the field. Um, you know, some of these came from Amazon. Uh, they uh, are, I don't want to say no-name batteries, but I really haven't heard of them. And some of the other brands you see online. Uh, you have to understand that, you know, most of the batteries being made are done by very few factories. So most of them are using the same cells and just kind of relabeling them as uh, as their own. Um, the difference between them and the PA batteries, of course, is uh, they all have varying degrees of uh, quality in the cells. And some, some companies are even selling rejected cells. Uh, the cells that aren't up to spec, they put on a separate pile, basically, and some of the companies buy up those uh, those cells and sell them. They might be cheaper, but they're not very reliable sometimes. Uh, the big deal about the PA batteries is they are 100% always, you know, reliable. They're the best cells that PA could obtain. Okay, here's a couple of other options. Uh, this is a 7.4 volt. Obviously, LiPo cells are 3.7 uh, volts per cell. This is an ADC discharge rate, which is probably unnecessary for the application because this is powering a receiver. 5,200 milliamps, it's a, it's, a, it's a large battery, but this is flying a 55-pound jet. And I have two receiver packs to make sure that, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the airplane craft is safe. Um, this is a life battery, uh, uh, lithium iron, uh, I mean lithium uh, uh, iron. These are 3.3 uh, volts each, but they behave a little bit differently than 
uh, lipos. Lipos will lose their voltage gradually uh, in a, a rather linear way and um, it'll just keep dropping. A life battery, one of the big reasons I you know, would never fly an aircraft, <clears throat> and now this is to, to power, uh, uh, they use lifes to power radios and things like this. This is to power the, uh, uh, the ECU on the jet's, uh, the jet's computer for the, uh, um, for the turbine engine. But these tend to, they drop from max charge voltage down to 3.3 volts and they stay there for quite a long time. But when the battery is done, it drops phew, straight down, which could be a real problem if you're you know, trying to, to power a motor with it. The last thing I want to discuss is uh, flying different voltages on an aircraft. This is my Addiction X. Uh, it flies wonderfully on 3S, but I can put it on 4S. But remember, I'm going to get 25% more RPMs. So I had to change the prop out from what was a 15.7, or 15.6 rather, I'm sorry, if you could see that. Oh, I guess you, there it is, 15.6, and I changed it to a 13.5 and the plane should perform uh, you know, wonderfully with it. The plane will be faster for sure. Uh, there will be less prop wash, which means this prop is smaller. So there'll be less, uh, less air going over the surfaces when I'm flying uh, low, slow 3D stuff. So the con level of control will be different. My preference is always to fly the bigger props because I think it just handles the 3D a little bit better. And since I'm not looking for, you know, really fast speeds or anything like that, I tend to go with lower pitch and uh, higher diameter in my propellers. The moral of the story with the batteries is don't always go for the highest C rating because that extra weight really affects the plane's performance. And also, uh, basically use up more power just to handle the extra weight. So sometimes it just doesn't make any sense, especially if you're flying 3D. If you're going to fly throttle wide open the entire time, you know, maybe, you know, maybe a higher C rating is necessary, but be careful when you're choosing it and um, do your homework before you purchase the battery. Mm -hmm.